Hey everybody, this is Matt uh, with another car vlog. How are you guys doing? Uh, so it's very dark around here. It's uh, so dark that my car light is not really doing a whole lot to light my face up. It's okay. It's a little bit of a mood lighting change here. I'm recording this video on a Sunday night rather than a Monday morning. And uh, one of the reasons is like in the last two uh, car vlogs that I did, I burned up 75% of my data plan. Yeah, um, so yeah, it took up a bunch of stuff because I uploaded all that stuff through my 4G connection. Obviously that wasn't too good of an idea. So what I'm doing is, I'm recording now, I'm going to upload through my Wi-Fi when I get home. And, uh, you know, just uh, hope you enjoy the lighting change. Right now I'm actually at a uh, reservation. It's called the Squaxin Re Reservation at a gas station. I just got some gas and I'm about ready to go home and stuff like that. Um, for those of you who have seen some of the uh, uh, artwork that's done by Native American culture around here, it's it's very, it's exact, exactly what you expect. There's a giant totem pole right in front of me, actually. So, there you go. Um, but anyways, uh, I hope you guys have had a great Thanksgiving if you guys uh, celebrate that. I know I did. I actually cooked a giant turkey for my family and uh, a bunch of things like yam and like stuffing and uh, right now it's raining. I don't know if you hear that but it's definitely raining. You can actually see it outside over there. But that's that's the nature of the Northwest, you know. Northwest is kind of like a giant version of England in many respects actually. It's, it's kind of funny because like if you look at it culturally. I feel like um, there are a lot of similar like attitudes between I, I shouldn't generalize but like there's there's a lot of um, how do I want to put it like there's a lot of uh, punk that actually comes out of England uh, as far as I understand it and it, the same thing goes for here in the the Northwest as a matter of fact Nirvana and, and, and Soundgarden and Alice in Chains all of those all of those bands came from this area right here uh, and it kind of fits the the mood of this place. I mean the rain definitely does affect people around here Which is why that kind of like angsty rock kind of like took off around here And if you even like come around and like tour some of the like the local bands Not even in Seattle, but in some of the local places around here. They they still have a lot of punk going on for them So pretty good. Um in my last video uh, somebody was actually asking uh, whether or not my job was going all right, and uh, I would say yeah, it's going all right. It's going really good uh, Those first two weeks are probably the hardest because you're not actually doing your job instead you're doing like paperwork and basically learning the the job profit processes uh, The company that I'm working for has a lot to do with medical stuff so obviously you have to go through all the FDA red tape and and, and processes that uh, they adopt in order to be able to sell their equipment. So you've got that and and so for the first week I was basically doing nothing but like lessons and, and quizzes and stuff like that basically to refresh myself on the process of doing FDA work and, and stuff like that. Uh, but other than that uh, I was able to clear out their lab. Their lab had a bunch of scrap metal and it was kind of disorganized and um, because it was the Thanksgiving week, uh, not a whole lot of people showed up to work, and so I didn't really have a whole lot of things to do to like kind of like uh, you know fill my time up. So what I ended up doing is some manual labor, and I cleared up probably about 300 pounds worth of scrap metal, and uh, I uh, what else did I do? Yeah, I, I, I organized the lab a little bit and. I basically cleared out a space where I'd be hanging out. I'm not really a like an office type engineer. Like I don't have a cubicle, and so basically my office will be the lab at that at some point, uh, probably next Monday actually, and uh, so that will be my permanent spot for the position. So other than that, it's going really well, and so yeah, yeah, that's basically what's happening. I'm down here in the Squaxin Tribe area because. Uh, I, I'm dropping off some family. I have two boys actually that uh, every other weekend I drive to see. As a matter of fact, that's one of the major reasons why I moved down here from 
the New England area, which is way across the country. Um, and, you know, I have two boys and, you know, I'm not with their mother anymore. And I still want to be their father. So, um, they, they were in the Western New York area up until about a year ago when I moved. And uh, I was kind of doing the same thing when I was over there in Connecticut. I, I used to live in Connecticut and I used to drive every other week for like about six hours each way, twice, <laughs> twice a weekend to basically see my boys and everything like that. And so I, I, I kind of do the same thing over here in Washington state. Uh, the only difference is there's not a six hour drive. Um, it's more like a, a one and a half hour drive um, probably three sometimes because the traffic on, on the highways are just a nightmare for Fridays. So, but in any case, I, I stopped down here at the Squaxin Tribe area basically because it's got cheaper gas, obviously. And they've got a cool little uh, uh, quick shop here. They've got a gigantic machine that basically has these cups that you pull out of them. And you put them in the machine and you choose the kind of consistency. That, that you uh, that you want for the shake and basically it'll make you a, a, a milkshake and it's pretty cool because you basically get to cu customize just a little bit how you want that shake going on and everything like that and it's uh you know it's something that you don't really see here every day I, I don't think I've ever seen that before except for this shop right here um, I don't really gamble at the the casino over there um, mostly because I'd be terrible at it and um, it's uh, not necessarily something I want to get into because I feel like if I got heavily into gambling, I'd lose all my money and then, you know, I wouldn't win anything and I wouldn't have any time to spend or money to spend on my other loves, which is obviously music and stuff like that. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm down here uh, in the Squaxin Tribe area. Um, yeah, so, and it takes about like a an hour or so to drive back back up north and stuff like that. Uh, what else was I going to talk about? Oh, okay, so I posted a video, I, I think it was like last Saturday. Uh, yeah, it was last Saturday that I posted the video, or maybe it was Friday or something like that, where I asked you guys if I could post my video game footage on my main channel instead of my gaming channel, and a lot of you guys, most of you guys were like, yeah, just go for it because we didn't know you had a gaming channel to begin with. It's funny how that works, but like, uh, I feel like um, YouTube and Twitter uh, are not like the best sources to try and transfer information. Like I make, I think I've made like a couple of videos about how I started up that channel. And, and I realized that uh, like people don't necessarily expect me to post, like my, my subscription rates versus my entire like viewership on YouTube on my main channel like subscriptions fill up about five percent of my viewership I said uh, probably less though uh, which is okay because you guys I, I feel like you guys actually um, uh, basically peruse my my music through the playlists and that's totally fine with me I'm totally happy with my viewership right now uh, based on my uh, subscription number and stuff like that. I'm fine with that. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guys are liking the idea of me basically just posting the video game footage on my main channel. And that, that would make things easier for me because I would basically be managing just one channel instead of two, uh, which is always easier. It's, it's kind of funny trying to switch between the two channels because Sometimes I, I, I'm on a video on one channel and then I switch up uh, a tab uh, on another like, you know, instance of Chrome uh, and then I switch channels in the middle of the video and I forget and I try to post a comment and it never works. So yeah, in any case, yeah. So, all right, so I mean, now that Thanksgiving is over, uh, it's going to be um, nothing but trying to figure out what to do for Christmas and then like the final tracks figuring out what I need for that final mix I've been talking about this for about two or three months you know the final mix I've got to have uh, enough tracks for the final mix and I figure um, what I want to try to do 
tried to do with that final mix is to basically take my time, uh, start maybe three weeks before it actually uh, needs to be posted on the 31st. And that way I can do a little bit more than just basically splice songs together. Uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, just basically make a long run of whatever I produce at, at the time. Because I feel like maybe I can contribute some new stuff in the final mix. Like if I want to basically act like I'm a, an actual DJ and, and throw a beat on one side and then like the original track on the other side and then kind of like make its own new track in the middle instead of just like okay so we've got a, a build up right here and at this build up, build up at the exact time i'm just gonna switch tracks so i want to try and do more like uh, things more like that be a little bit more creative with the final mix and, and stuff like that um for christmas music uh <laughs> Christmas music has always been kind of a weird thing for me. Um, I know that in 2012, uh, I tried to post like three or four different traditional public domain tracks or my takes on it. Like I'd, I'd produce my own takes for like things like Silent Night and and also, you know, Oh Holy Night. And I think every single one of those tracks I had problems with. Like I would actually get content ID matches from posting my own renditions of these like tr these uh, public domain like holiday tracks, and uh, that came to an apex when I posted "Oh Holy Night." I think it was claimed by Warner Brothers, and the claim was so bad that uh, I essentially it locked me out of basically completed completing the data fields like the description of the video and the meta tags and stuff like that like it would not let me save those uh save those changes on the video and um and not only that like usually when i got those content id matches for christmas i would basically just file the content uh you know counter notification and then uh okay so people are looking at me funny because already i'm a vlogger i guess right but anyways, um, so I would file that counter notification and like almost immediately it would be like taken off. But that wasn't the same for Oh Holy Night because when Warner Brothers basically claimed it, they held on to that claim until I think January 5th. And um, it wasn't quite, it wasn't quite as uh, uh, um, smooth as what I would hope. And until that January 5th date where they actually responded to me and said, okay, you're, you're good. Like I couldn't actually update the, the video and I had to basically communicate what had happened to that track through a, a bunch of like um, on-screen notifications instead of the actual video description. Yeah, all right. So w what I usually do for Christmas now is I basically produce my own music, my own original music that sounds Christmas-ish you know, holiday-ish and stuff like that. So it has the feel of it, but it's not necessarily like the classical songs that everybody listens to. So that that's where I stand on Christmas music. That's what I've been doing since Christmas of 2012. And I'll probably do a little bit of that uh, like during the month of December. So yeah. Oh, somebody got in trouble. All right. So um, anyways. Um, that's pretty much it, uh, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, somebody, um, in my last car vlog, uh, basically was telling me that, well, he was basically kind of alarmed that I was saying that dubstep was dying, and, uh, I realized, like, when I was, like, going over the data with you guys, telling everybody that my techno and, and dubstep were on the decline while everything else was kind of like on the incline. Um, I, so first of all, I want to say to that guy, if even if like dubstep is dying as a, as a genre, I feel like you shouldn't actually let that get in the, in the way of you enjoying that genre of music. Like if you really like dubstep, like don't, don't let the fact that less people are listening to it like stop you from enjoying that piece of music or that genre of music it's it's you know you you enjoy what you enjoy i enjoy a lot of things that are out of style believe me and 
that's why I was surprised when breakbeats seemed to be something that you guys like. So, uh, but yeah, and to my own fault, maybe it's just me expressing that uh, there are some factors that are making my, those those playlists, the the dubstep and the electronic dance music playlists, go down, while everything else goes up. I know that. Um, uh, I'm Everywhere, the most popular song that I have, is kind of running its course. It's about three years old now. Almost four, actually. So, I realized that um, you know, even though Jacksepticeye is still using that track, uh, people are maybe uh, getting a, a little bit of wear and tear on that song. And that's fine, because a lot of other songs are picking up very slowly, and I feel like the rest of my catalog is kind of like getting up there and just you know climbing up there where the most popular songs that have been up there for like three or four uh years are kind of going downhill so it's it's kind of a bittersweet thing yeah i realize that um you know one of my songs or some of my songs are going down but then others are picking up so uh and i i feel like that's a good testament of being able to be prolific in my production and uh, experimenting around with new ideas. You never know. You never know what ideas actually take. Um, I, fig I figure that's one of the pieces of advice or like observations that I've made over the years is that, you know, you see some of these YouTubers that they will be like, this is it, this is it. This is your viral video that will catapult me back into the spotlight and everything. And I feel like you can't force uh, anything to go viral. There's there's nothing that does. You, like the things that I least expect on my channel go go viral or like at least popular. Nothing goes viral on my channel, but it, like the things that I least expect goes popular. Well, while things where I say, "Hey, this is it. You guys will love the song," and you guys are like, "Eh, it's all right." But I really like that simple thing that you did like a couple days ago. That, that you didn't really expect, so that's I'm fine with that. Um, anyways, I I guess that's it. Uh, I've got to go drive back up now, and uh, uh, it's getting dark, and you probably can't see me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, vlog, and I'll see you guys next time.